The trade bell, it was so good yesterday. Fox footy senior AFL reporter Tom Morris that we demanded he return. Tom, great to have you here. Thanks, Jared. We're going to focus on Carlton as a starting point here because Sam Petrevsky seaton was the news after you left us yesterday. He is requesting a trade back to Western Australia and specifically to West Coast, which from what I can tell is the source of some angst with Blues supporters who are hoping it might have been much more simple if he'd gone for the Dockers. That's right. I don't think Fremantle were that keen on Petrescu seaton I think they would have taken him for nothing, but I'm not sure they made a huge pitch towards him. So he prefers West Coast. And West Coast has pick 10, which is clearly too high yep. for Petrescu seaton even though he was pick six in 2016. It's just worth noting how he was flicked around positionally at Carlton. Last year, I spoke to Champion Data this morning. Last year, he played 44% in defence. Sorry, this year, 28% defence and 28% midfield. So he really couldn't find a home. West Coast sees him as a midfielder and they want him replacing you know, Luke Shuey when he retires, um, You know, getting inside that engine room. So West Coast has picked 10. They've also got two second rounders. And I think one of these two picks will get it done, 29 and 35. Yep. I don't think Carlton's going to play too hard ball on this. Because they know that they probably, if they were going to give Petrescu Seaton a contract, it wouldn't have been a big contract. It might have been just a one-year deal. So he wasn't necessarily a hugely required player for them. So 29 is there and 35 relates yeah. to a trade from the previous year. It's Port Adelaide's pick. That's right. And pick 49 as well, which was received from Sydney last year. Now, there's news about Jared Brander as well from West Coast, who I think in any other, uh, not era, maybe two years before COVID, you know, before COVID hit, Jared Brander would have been a pretty attractive commodity for most clubs, key position player, four years in the system. But I'm not sure Carlton need a Jared Brander, so I'm not sure that he is going to come into trade discussions here. So it's a second rounder, and Carlton fans will go, oh, he was pick six. He was pick six, but he hasn't really been a key part of the team for a couple of years. And he's not going to West Coast for big money. Not at all. They don't have any money, Jared. Shannon Hearn and Josh Kennedy and uh, Liam Duggan – are all taking big, big pay cuts. Jack Redden as well. So they have no money. So he's going there literally for a new home for a fresh start. What else have Carlton got on the books in terms of players out of contract? So Jack Nunes is out of contract. Lockie O'Brien, who's a top 10 pick as well from a few years ago. Will Setterfield is out of contract. Jack Silvani re-signed yesterday. They've got a lot of players out of contract. And I sense it's because they're waiting for a new coach to come in. Yep. And to, not just for the players to see who the coach is, but mostly, I think, given the status of these players, for the coach to see who the players are and to make a call from there. And that new coach, if it does resolve in the next few days, has the luxury of a, of a, a week at least to make those assessments. Yeah, a bit of flexibility. I remember St Kilda in 2013, Alan Richardson was appointed four days before the draft. So he had no say in Nick Del Santo losing the, uh, leaving the club, for example. Yep. So that w- that le- left him very little flexibility. So a contribution being made by Brad, and he's – so we have a couple of categories. One <laughs> is take it to the bank, which people are taking liberties with, but I sort of yeah. love you for it. Yep. Take it to the bank. Paddy Dow to Richmond for a late second-round pick to play with his brother. Paddy Dow's a contracted player. So it's very hard to say that's going to happen. I haven't heard it, Jared, but I wouldn't discount it completely. It depends on who comes in, but it's nice romanticism, isn't it, to play with his brother? Okay, so the other piece to Carlton is Adam Chera, which has been a constant in our trade bell for a couple of weeks now. You've turned your mind to what what do they need to make this happen? Yeah, this is a really interesting one for Carlton. If you cast your mind back to 2019, admittedly before list manager Nick Austin came to the club, They couldn't get Tom Papley through the door. And look what Tom Papley's become. He's an All-Australian. He's a dominant player for the Sydney Swans. And he would be a great player at Carlton. So they couldn't get it done. And then they gave up too much, in most people's views, for Zach Williams financially uh, and Adam Saad from Essendon. Pick eight. I know there were some late pick swaps there, but essentially pick eight for Adam Saad. So it's a tough balancing act for Nick Austin because he doesn't want to miss out on Adam Chera. But he also doesn't want to give up too much because if you give up too much, then you then you risk being in the same position as they are now with Adam Saad. So Fremantle will ask for pick six and probably more will be their starting position. The Blues have pick five, 25, but they're nothing until the fourth round. So what is fair? Well, Chera was pick five in 2017. He's played 76 games in four seasons. Um, he's played 21, 20, 17, 18. So he's dependable. He's reliable. And I think, Jared, it's fair to say that his best is still to come. He also finished third in their best and fairest last year. So Frio's got every right to say, hey, you've given up pick eight for Adam Saad. Yep. Chera was pick five. Four years in the system, we want more than pick six. And that's the tough balancing act for Nick Austin and Carlton at the moment.
uh, Jordan Dawson has chosen Adelaide rather than Port Adelaide, which was an interesting little tidbit when it landed yesterday. It was. So Adelaide confirmed it, I think, about midday yesterday that uh, he wants to go there. He was an Adelaide supporter growing up. His favourite player was Mark Rashido, who was heavily involved in the process to lure him to the club. He toured, I think, the Crows and Port Adelaide in consecutive days last week. But how are they going to get this deal done? I, I get the feeling this could go deep into the trade period, this sort of arrangement, because the Sydney Swans will play hardball. They're filthy losing a player who finished third in their best and fairest and has maybe six, seven, eight, ten years ahead of them. So Adelaide's not going to give up pick four, and they're not going to give up a future first rounder, partly because they want to use those picks. And if they don't want to use them, they want them to try to lure Lukosius or Isaac Rankin home next year. They don't want to use all their chips now in Jordan Dawson. They do have pick 23. That's not going to be enough for the Swans. They've also got pick 37, which is from Melbourne. And it's probably fair to say, Jared, that when they did that pick swap with Melbourne last year, they would have expected that uh, the pick 37 would be in the mid-20s or mid-to-high-20s, given how the Demons yeah. went. So it's a shame for the Swans that Dawson didn't nominate Port Adelaide because they have pick 16, which I think would have been a lot closer to getting this deal done. So have you got any theories running? My theory is that the Swans will say no, 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 and it will go very deep. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. and uh, and Adelaide will say no, no, no back as well. So they'll have to get creative. I think a third club might have to get involved. Okay. There might have to be a future swapping of picks. I can't see any players getting involved. This is the trade deal that interests me the most, even more than Adam Chera, between the Swans and the Crows, finishing third in the best and fairest and leaving your club, I know for family reasons, to the Crows, that really hurts Sydney. Players in limbo, and some of these are taken in by the, the texts that mm. come through. So just walk me through who's in limbo. I saw a text come through about Trent Dumont and Sean Attlee. So they're both in limbo because they don't have contracts for next year. Trent Dumont, or they're both free agents, but... There's been some interest from Port Adelaide regarding Trent Dumont. I think Chris Davies, their football manager, confirmed that last week. But they're certainly not going to uh, bend over backwards to go and get him. He's from South Australia, I think, initially. Um, Sean Attlee, who's been a, a warrior, not a warrior, probably a stayer is probably the best way to confirm him for the Kangaroos over several years now. He's just been told you've got to wait. And you've got to wait until we know what our list positions are before we can offer you a contract. And then there's Tom Campbell as well. He's in the same position. At Hawthorne, Oliver Hanrahan... Um, and Tim O'Brien are in the same position. Tim O'Brien's a free agent. I think there is some preliminary interest from other clubs, but he again has to wait. He took a, not mark of the year, but he was in the top three, I yep. think, for mark of the year. Hanrahan is well liked by Sam Mitchell, but he's sort of part of that uh, mid-sized half forward sort of brigade. And then Mason Cox at Collingwood, his future is uncertain. And Jacob Townsend, who played such a good debut game for Gold Coast. Jared, the Gold Coast list situation is so interesting because they have almost no spots on their list. They've, I think they've recontracted 37 or 38 players. Yep. Townsend's not one of them. So he's very much on the edge whether he gets another deal or not. And he might have to wait until mid-October to find out. It does strike me with Sean Attlee, who is, he's the poster boy for nondescripts. His entree into mainstream conversation <laughs> is to become the source of speculation in trade week. <laughs> That's right. He's lived his whole <laughs> career more than 200 games as a nondescript. I think he's played about 240 or 250 games. Yep. He's done so well. Uh, and, and he potentially is just a victim of North Melbourne going young and North Melbourne bringing in some players to try to strengthen for next year. But he doesn't know yet. So he's just sitting there and waiting. Uh, Rory Lobb is, a, is, is an intriguing one because he wants to leave Fremantle. And he wants to, yep. even though he's got two years left on his contract, he would like to find a new home. He's happy to take less money uh, on a three-year deal somewhere. That Now, the, as I said to you yesterday, the Gold Coast Suns won't take him because they've got Marby O'Troll. North Melbourne won't take him because they're going for Coleman Jones. Essendon isn't particularly interested. Uh, but I wouldn't be surprised if Rory Lobb fell to another home somewhere. And I, I'm not sure if Fremantle's going to pay some of the salary. What I do know is Lobb is happy to take less than the roughly $700,000 he's on per year at the moment. Any word on Braden Sire leaving or staying at Collingwood? No, his name gets brought up all the time, and I have no read on. Well, I do have a, the read is that I that I don't think he's going to go. Um, I haven't been told he's going to go. So at the moment, the status quo is he'll be at the Pies next year. Rumours circling that Essendon are courting Riley West from the Dogs. Any truth to it? Essendon are court. Well, Essendon are interested in an inside midfielder. That's why I mentioned Luke Dunstan yep. yesterday. Um, I'm not sure Riley West is exactly what they're after. I haven't heard that one specifically, but they are after another midfielder, yep. I'm probably keeping you from your real job, Tom. No, Thank you fine. for being here. Much appreciated. A ringing of the trade bell. Thanks, Jared. Have a good day.